Hello everybody. In today's lecture, we are going to uh, discuss about another approach in SOC design flow. So earlier we had discussed the water flow model, the spiral model and the construct by correction approach. So in this we are going to uh, talk about the co-design methodology which is currently being employed. So let's see under this co-design methodology how the system design flow it works. So talking about this, this is the typical design flow which is based on the ESL design methodology. Now ESL stands for electronic system level design which was introduced in 1990s and it was based on the co-design approach to the SOC design. Now when I say ESL it means electronic system design in which hardware software co-design was the keyword. So co-design was uh, you can say an approach which helped improve the overall system performance reliability both in the terms of time and cost. So when I say co-design in the co-design here both hardware and software they are uh, viewed at a at a functional level before being partitioned into the independent branches. So uh, the system is viewed in the terms from the you can say perception of what is hardware, what is software at an abstraction level much above the RTM. So they were unlike the other approaches in which or the typical ASIC design flow approach in which you first go to from the functional level to you go to the architectural level at the RTA level you specify your hardware and then it is broken down into hardware and software. So in the ESL model it was not like that. ESL was introduced uh, around I think 1990s and over the time number of refinements they were uh, coming to the design process. So if we pay attention here, so this is the typical design flow based on this ESL code design methodology. So initially first at the first stage we know the system specifications as they are given, the requirements they are identified, then a functional level specification is created and then there is behavioral or the algorithm or the instruction level model which is being developed. So functional model is developed here, then there is the algorithmic or the instruction level uh, model which is developed here. So it is with respect to both hardware and software. So algorithm it is a step by step movement and instruction level what instructions which are required in the software. Okay, then if any modifications so they are being uh, dry run and tested for if they are going to solve the purpose and if any refinement is there that is being carried out at the algorithmic level itself which is helping a lot to refine the design process. From here it goes down into the hardware and software partition and here they are following the approach of co-design. Okay, so when I say hardware software co-design it includes co-simulation, it includes concurrency of developing both hardware and software together. It uh, means co-synthesis of the hardware, software and the interface also which is required. So the hardware and software they are interacting at the each level instead of just finally interacting at the integration level. So that is happening side by side. Okay and finally there is the integration of this in the uh, this co-simulation you can say uh, this define and test stage and finally it is partitioning and specifying in the hardware what blocks are required and specifying what software is required. Okay, so this is the typical design flow. So it starts with a function level specification as I told you models of computation they are there. We will talk about this in detail in the later lectures. Definitely we have to revisit this when we talk about the design methodologies but just to brief. So models of computation are used to represent the functionality and application behavior is represented using the uh, this models of computation. And the architectural 
specification is also there in this co-design approach. So as I told you, we'll talk about it later. So successive refinement is there in these models. Then we connect the hardware and software design teams. So they interact earlier in the system. And this development of hardware and software, it takes place concurrently. And then there is the architectural mapping that is using the models of architecture. And then there is interfacing at the each level. Okay, side by side, hardware and software, they are developed concurrently and they are uh, interacting with each other. So typical example, you can take, let's say I, need, I have a hardware, I uh, decide, okay, I have a computational unit which requires a multiplexer and I'm making use of a reconfigurable hardware. So I may need the machine language code for running that. So that is constituting my software part and my hardware unit, which is going to be run using that. Let's say an ARM processor is being used. Okay, so that means the concurrency in developing both hardware and software. So we are identifying what processor and the coprocessors are needed and what software instructions are needed. So those are developed, those are in, uh, interfaced at each level and after they work together, we move to the next stage. So this is all done in parallel. Okay. And finally, there is hardware software co-verification and the system integration. So one of the very successful models which was introduced under this methodology is the double roof model. So if the, you see this double roof model, it defines the typical top-down uh, approach to the design process. So in this, we have software and the hardware both moving together. And we have the double roofs. There is an upper layer and there is this lower layer indicated in red. This upper layer indicated in blue both in hardware and in the software going hand in hand. So if I talk about the software, the system is broken down into the task and for implementing these tasks, they are broken down into the instruction level. Whereas on the hardware side, the system is broken into the components which may be sub blocks or the subsystems and finally into the logic uh, which is going to implement. When I say logic, it means the actually units which are going to implement that. Okay. So if I see here carefully, this upper blue indicating layer that is describing the functional or the specification uh, view of the system whereas this lower layer that is defining the architectural layer or the implementation layer which is going to be there okay so we are mapping actually our system or breaking our system first into the functional model and the architectural model when I say about architectural model that is uh, talking about the structural implementation of how we are going to uh, how we are going to design a system okay so that may include not only the blocks the um, that may be the reusable ip blocks or they may be the new units which are required that can also include the bus architecture the communication interfaces which are required so even all those they are falling within this architecture level okay so initially our system it has to be broken down into the functional level or the specification level and the architecture level so the functional level it falls on the upper loop or upper layer of this double roof model whereas the architecture level it falls on the lower layer of the double roof model so uh, this left hand side it is showing the typical abstraction levels during the software design process where the whereas the right hand side it is showing the hardware design process okay so each side is organized into the different abstraction levels so these are the different abstraction levels which are going to be there so uh, when I talk about this upper roof it describes the functionality which is required so it is broken down breaking down the system into the components logic uh, logic level, gate level and eventually the physical implementation level whereas the lower level is a structural implementation which describes 
the architecture which is required including the allocated sources the scheduling the binding decisions so all they are being implemented at the architecture level so the design automation in the double roof model is visualized by these vertical arrows which represents represents the synthesis step at the each stage when i say synthesis step that means generating the output so we should not confuse it with the simulation and synthesis terminology of uh, what we are talking about in the vlsi physical design flow don't go there here synthesis means now there is a transition if you see clearly at the each abstraction level there is a transition arrow which is being indicated by this light blue color from red dot to this uh, from this blue dot to this red dot so this is actually representing the synthesis or generating the output from the functional level as we move towards the architecture level that is how that particular functionality is eventually being generated or being implemented so that is being visualized by these blue arrows so uh, just to take an example let's say there is a logic synthesis we talk about this to explain this so there is logic synthesis so a given specification of the system is in the form of the boolean equation or fsm that can be specified using the hdn or any or this diagram so at the higher level or at the upper roof it is in, as a boolean equation or fsm but at the structure level the output may be coming as a gate netlist okay so this is being synthesized into that similarly here the component we know we are going to imagine it as a black box let's say it is a multiplexer so multiplexer i can imagine it is 4 uh, is to 1 is to 4 multiplexer so here it is broken down into the rtl level of that so that is how each abstraction level is uh, moving towards or the mapping between this functional and the architecture level is being done through these or represented through these vertical transitions whereas these horizontal arrows they are indicating passing from <clears throat> one stage to the next lower level of abstraction okay so this is interacting between them these horizontal uh, double sided arrows they are indicating the uh, interaction between the hardware and the software at the each stage and this transition is moving from higher level to lower level at each stage okay so as we move down to the lower level of abstraction so this is the typical roof model the more details about the co design methodology that will be eventually covered at the later stages uh, after we familiarize with this soc system a little better so as of now i hope you understand what is the double roof model and this is the detailing of the same system design flow as we had talked about in the previous slides so this is the model we had discussed or this is the design flow we had discussed today so this is uh, now it is just a detailed form of this but we'll come back to this detailed flow diagram after we talk about the asic design flow the typical design flow which is being taught to all the vlsi students uh, today so that is not used in the industry for soc but a top down approach is the only way which is being talked about so we'll just try to compare the two let's go through that asic design flow and the design tools in the next lecture and then we'll come to revisit this and compare this soc design flow with the asic design flow to compare what are the differences if we view both of them as a soc as a top down approach okay so that is all for this lecture on double roof model thank you so much